was a time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching, but every place I turned for healing left me more broken than the last. Take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back. A preacher in a verse where they've seen me at my worst to the love I had at first. Oh, I want to go to church. Trying to walk on my own, but I'm wound up lost. Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross. It's not a trophy for the winner. It's a shelter for the sinners, and it's right where I belong. Take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my walls. Take me back to a preacher and a verse, where they've seen me at my worst, to the love I had at first. Oh, I want to go to church. I want to go to church Oh, more than an obligation It's our foundation The family of God I know it's hard But we need each other The sisters and brothers Oh, take me back To the place that feels like home to the people I can depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they see me at my words to the love I had at first oh I wanna go to church
time that I swore I would never go back I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had I was running, I was searching But every place I turned for healing Left me more broken than the last Take me back To the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back To a preacher in a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Trying to walk on my own But I'm wound up lost Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross It's not a trophy for the winners It's a shelter for the sinners And it's right where I belong Take me back to the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my walls Take me back a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst to the love I had at first oh I wanna go to church I wanna go to church like home to the people I can depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my words to the love I had at first oh I wanna go to church Good morning. I'm Pastor Troy, next generation pastor here at Christ Family Church, and I'm honored to be the one today to be able to welcome you to our online experience. Although we can't gather together within the walls of the church, the church truly has no walls. We, the people, are the church. So whether you're in your bedroom, your living room, or listening in your car or out camping, no matter where you are, you're in church now. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you that no matter what's going on in the world, we can still join together with our other believers and worship you. We may be separated and not within the walls of the church, but we're together as a church family. And Lord, just show us the many blessings that we have despite all the problems going on right now. Reveal to us the blessings because they're out there and you're showing yourself to us through all this turmoil. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody. Let's go to worship. Good morning, Christ Family Church. We are doing online church. We don't get to see each other face to face, but we still get to worship the God who sees all of us, and he is watching us today. And we thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. We're keeping our eyes on Jesus. The Bible says that he's the author, the finisher of our faith. And so we do that, Lord. We declare that you're the Lord over our lives right now. We're keeping our eyes focused on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we look to the sun. Set our eyes on our Savior. See the image of love. Sing his praises forever. Oh, we look to you. Oh, we look to you. 
see the kingdom burst into color at the speed of light. Oh, and freedom shaking up the atmosphere as the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears beyond the skies of. to kingdom come see the hope of heaven shining like the rising sun oh now forever lifted up from death to life Come to the end. 
for the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What a Savior. Amen. Amen. What a Savior. Amen. 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 How awesome it is that we get to worship God together in this format, though we're separated, we're still connecting together. I just think I've really been enjoying worshiping in this way. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you uh, some things happening at the church, but before I do that, let me just say, if this is the first time that you've ever worshiped at Christ Family Church, whether it be online or in person, do me a favor and go online and fill out the Connect card online. Uh, and you can go on the website at ChristFamily.tv. It's on the homepage there. And just fill that out with as little or as much information as you feel comfortable with. And I just like to know who is worshiping with us online. In fact, if you're a member of Christ Family Church, there's also a button on the website where you can click where uh, you you can check in for you and your family and let us know who all is uh, is worshiping here with this this Sunday morning. And you know, people have been asking, where do I go to get all the information and and where do I know what's happening at the church? And that is on the website. We're trying to put everything on the website at ChristFamily.tv. That's where everything is happening, whether it be youth group or Zoom meetings or anything like that. It's all going to be on there. So, uh, you know, one thing that is also on there that's very important to us as a church is that we believe in the power of prayer. And so you can go online and fill out an online prayer request or praise report on the website. And what's really neat about that is as soon as you submit it, it gets emailed to people that immediately start praying for your need or celebrating in your praise report. And I just think that's very important for us to, to continue connecting 
with prayer uh, and ongoing during this time. Also on Tuesday mornings, we're having a Zoom prayer life group meeting at 6 a.m. We've been doing this the last few weeks, and let me say it's actually been really enjoyable uh, being able to connect online and Zoom meetings in this way. Uh, So I encourage you to to be a part of that 6 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. You can go on the website to get the number and all that. Also, a Zoom that's happening tonight at 5 o'clock is the youth Zoom meeting, youth Zoom group we should call some. We should make up some name for that or something. But it's the Zoom uh, youth group tonight at five o'clock, and uh, you know we're going to play some games, and then we'll be splitting up into tribes on Zoom. It's pretty neat. And then you know some things other else that are happening here online is our kids. Uh, we have Sunday school. My kids have been enjoying this. As soon as you get done with this service, you can go and watch Kids Church with your kids. And Pastor Troy has done a fabulous job of putting all these videos together for every age group. And I know that your kids will enjoy it. My kids have really been enjoying it. You can go on the website and find the links there, or you can go on the YouTube page. But uh, go online to ChristFamily.tv for staying up to date with everything Christ Family Church related. And uh, that's going to be the landing place for all the information. Rather than giving out a bunch of links, just go on the website and you'll be able to figure everything out there. And this time, I would like to pass it off to Pastor Tim, who is going to lead us in a time of giving with our tithes and offering. Hello, everyone. Thank you for once again inviting us into your homes this morning. You know, we've seen a lot of changes the last few weeks. Some things that were... uh, once near and dear to us that kind of made our little worlds go around have at least temporarily uh, went away. Uh, For those of you who are big sports fans, you can attest to that. There was no opening day of Major League Baseball. There's no NBA right now. There was no March Madness. The school buildings that our students, our children once attended, um, they they don't have a building to go to right now. Uh, The church building the church still exists, but the building where we once got together to worship is that's something that we temporarily we can't gather together and worship. Hair salons can't get our hair cuts right now. Don't look away, look away, don't look at my hair. <laughs> um, hair nail salons, no manicures, no pedicures. Uh, our our place of employment where we work, a lot of us are having to work remotely right now, and unfortunately, some of you have been temporarily furloughed or you've been laid off. Entertainment, uh, we can't go to our favorite place to watch uh, a movie. We can't go see plays. Um, A lot of these things have been temporarily removed in our lives, but there are some things that, that still are, and that's God and the church. As we step into our time of giving today, let's be reminded that God still is and the church still marches on. You who are watching this video today, you are the church. You are the mouthpiece of God. You are the ones that speaking hope into a world that so desperately needs to hear a word of hope. You know, God does not need our tithing and offering in order to sustain the kingdom of God. But what God does desire is your faith. Giving is an act of faith. We talked just a few minutes ago about all these things that have, that, have, that have went away. We can't put our faith in those things, but we still can put our faith in God. And as we step into this time here this morning, God desires to see where our faith is. And this is our opportunity to show God what our faith is in. There are various ways that you can give into the kingdom of God today. Just go to ChristFamily.tv, click on Give. You can find all of these ways. God bless all of you. Hope all of you have a wonderful and a blessed day. Back to you, Pastor Kenneth. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Uh, You know, when when this all gets done, we need to go hang out together and watch some sports together. I'd really thoroughly enjoy that. At this time, I'd like to pass it off to Pastor Paul, who's going to bring our message this morning. And uh, I'm excited to hear the word that he has for us. I know he's worked really, really hard on this this week, um, and it's timely and it's specific for us today. So, Pastor Paul, I'm going to give it to you to to bring the word. Thank you, and 
Thank you all for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning as we celebrate God's goodness together. You know, during the past couple of weeks, I have uh, been thinking of a phrase that comes from the Bible uh, concerning one of the promises of God, and it says that God neither sleeps nor slumbers. And I couldn't remember where it was, so I looked it up, and it actually comes from Psalm 121. So that's where I'm going to go today. And I want to share uh, a little bit from that psalm with you. It's pretty interesting because in one of our online life groups uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, somebody, I, we, we were encouraging people to share a passage of Scripture that has specifically ministered to them during this particular time. And somebody shared uh, Psalm 121. So I thought <laughs> that's a word of confirmation. And uh, the things that they said about it really encouraged me a lot. And I thought, like, you know, we're really right on looking into this psalm at this particular time. And so let me read it to you. Psalm 121, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, only eight verses, so I'll read the whole thing. He says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? Of course, the uh, obvious uh, answer and the implied answer is no, that's not where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never, never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as a protective shield. The sun will not harm you by the day nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. And the Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. And I just thought, you know, this is a very appropriate passage of Scripture uh, that the psalmist leads us to at this time. And this particular psalm is a part of a group of psalms, 15 psalms together, uh, 120 through 134, and they're called the Songs of Ascent. And the reason why they're called that, they're also called Pilgrim Songs, is because they were sung as the people of Israel would make their journey to Jerusalem to celebrate one of the annual, three annual festivities, or festivals. Jerusalem sits on a hill, and uh, that's the reason why they're called the Songs of Ascent, because traditionally the people, as they traveled toward Jerusalem and made their ascent up to the city, they would sing these songs. And according to some traditions, the priest would also sing some of these 15 songs as they would make the ascent up the steps uh, to the temple in Jerusalem. So these are, these are pilgrim songs. These are pilgrims of journey. They would sing these uh, uh, in the journey, and we're certainly in a journey right now. So I think it's appropriate for us to look at this as we go through um, a difficult time and a challenging time. It's for a challenging time for us personally. It's a challenging time for us corporately. Um, and it's because we live in a fallen world. This world, when it was first created, was perfect, but it fell. And because of that, we're in a fallen world. Our relationships are fallen. So because of the fallenness of the world, sickness comes and disease comes and viruses come, all because of the fallenness of the world. But God did not leave this world and its brokenness uh, without grace. As a matter of fact, he has provided and he does provide special grace for us uh, in everything that we face. And he purchased this through his suffering. He purchased this so that we might have it. Jesus knows our world. He lived in our world and he experienced suffering. He tasted it uh, much more than we can ever know or much more than we can ever imagine. And he did that uh, on our behalf. Therefore, the promises of God, these things that are the expressions of God's grace are things that we can latch on to. 
And I believe that Psalm 121 is a, kind of a compilation of some of the promises of God. Let me speak toward that today. There are certain expressions of his grace here. He talks about preserving us, that being kept by God means preserving us, and it means protecting us, number two. And number three, it means preparing us. So I like alliteration. So here it is, uh, preservation, protection, and preparation. I hope that after we get through this passage here, you will never forget Psalm 121. First of all, he talks about preservation. He says, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, verse 2. He will not allow me to stumble. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, who watches over you never slumbers or sleeps. Uh, The first thing he talks about is the fact that our help comes from the Lord. No matter what avenue God uses to bring blessing to funnel favor in your direction, no matter how he does that, what conduit he uses, what instrument he uses, uh, to he ultimately gets the glory. He ultimately gets the, pray, gets the praise because it all comes from him. God can use a variety of instruments to get make provision for us. It can be through our job. It can be through our family. It can be through our parents, our position, our friends, or whatever. He can use a lot of conduits for blessing, but it's all from him. Our help comes from the Lord. I remember uh, uh, there was one particular uh, season, I would call it a dry season, that Delia and I went through for a a period of time. And uh, all of a sudden, it seemed like the windows of heaven just uh, poured out on us, you know. And uh, favor and blessing from every side, materially, relationally, spiritually, we just felt like, man, we're blessed. And uh, I was so unaccustomed to it at that particular time that I just wondered what in the world is going on here. I was just a little bit suspicious of the blessing of God. And I remember thinking uh, one day, you know, when is this going to end? When's the other shoe going to drop? Whatever that means. Well, when is uh, somebody going to show up and say, (laughs) you know, I was just kidding. This is only for a short time. But in the midst of that, I remember that quiet, comforting expression from the Holy Spirit. You know how God assures us and instructs us and instructs us in our hearts. And uh, he said this to me, uh, spoke this to my heart. The way to maintain the favor and the blessing of God is to always give him the credit, always give him the glory, always praise him. Not just to be grateful for what you have, but to give all of the glory to God. And if you get any praise, give it to him. That's the way to maintain the blessing of God in your life. Uh, God may bless us and help us in a variety of ways from a variety of sources, but the ultimate source is always the Lord. So we need to remember that. And then that's what I think that's what it means to be kept by God. But then he goes on about this and this preservation thing. Uh, He doesn't allow me to stumble. And the reason why I don't stumble is because he doesn't sleep or slumber. When I'm sleeping, God's awake. Sleeping is one thing, but slumbering is another thing. It's dozing off or nodding off, taking a nap, basically being unaware of what's going on. Well, God not only does not sleep, but he doesn't slumber either. He is always alert to whatever we are going through. The eyes of the Lord this morning are upon you. How he can do that with 7 billion people on the face of the earth, I don't know, but God does it. The eyes of the Lord are on you. This passage says he's watching over you, not just me and others, but he's watching over you. So he's keeping us. He's keeping us to preserve us. That's what it means to be kept by him, is to preserve preserve us. Um, it, that's a wonderful revelation to me, that, that even while I am sleeping, while you are sleeping, God is awake and he is orchestrating blessings and surprises for us that will come to us when the morning arises. I remember when I was a kid, 
my, uh, my mother and my grandmother, they would go out into the groves or wherever uh, among the trees, and they would pick fresh fruit, bring it home, and then they would make preserves. They were called preserves. Uh, peach preserves, orange preserves, figs, fig preserves. I remember those because my grandmother had this huge, I mean a humongous fig tree. We never could figure it out. She never did anything to try to keep it alive or anything. It just flourished. And every year uh, there in Louisiana, this fig tree would produce uh, thousands, thousands of figs. And when they were ripe, you could just pull them off. And it was, I loved it because it was like sugar. In fact, I got, I got sick on figs one time because I just ate and ate and ate figs. But they would preserve the fruit in jars. They called it canning, but it was, um, I don't know why they didn't call it jarring, but it, they would produce it, or they would preserve it in, in cans, called it canning. So go figure. Anyway, so, but they were called preserves. And there was a reason why they were called preserves, because they were being preserved. They were being kept for a purpose, for a certain time when we would break the seal on that jar and 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 enjoy uh, the preserves. Now, I, di I didn't like it so much back then. I, I really didn't because everybody else got to go to the store and they would buy real preserves and jam and jellies, uh, you know, with a nice, beautiful label on it and all of that. And all we had was a, a label that was taped to the mason jar that was, and somebody printed it by hand, uh, fig preserves or whatever. Of course, now I appreciate it more, and I'd probably give just about anything to have a jar of those fig preserves from way back there. But they would preserve it. They would seal it to preserve it. And in the same way, God preserves us for a purpose. So the keeping power of God is preserving us. He's preserving us for his use. And at the appropriate time, God will break the seal, open the doors, and usher us into a new season of productivity. That's why he preserves us. He doesn't just preserve us to put us on a shelf that he can look at us every now and then or that others might see us, but there's, the preservation has an act, active point to it, and that is that we are being kept for a purpose. That's the keeping power of God. I love this passage of Scripture, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. May he make you holy in every way. Not you make yourself holy, but may he make, your, make you holy. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. So God, then I love verse 24, and sometimes we quote 23, we don't look at 24. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. Now, what will he make happen? Will he make the second coming happen? Yes, but that's not what he's talking about here, that God will keep you and you will, he will make you holy in every way. And that word holy means set aside for a particular purpose. It means unique. It means special. Something that is holy does not mean that it is perfect. It means that it's set aside for a specific purpose. So God is going to preserve you. That, that's what it means to be kept by God. Here's another word, the word protection. God protects us. Uh, verse 5 and 6, the Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. So he stands beside me as my protective shade. He's making reference, obviously, to, it's kind of an analogy here, to the normal idea of somebody getting into the shade to get protection from the sun. Well, I can understand being shaded from the blazing heat of the sun, uh, but what does he mean that he protects us? Why would I need protection from the moon? Um, I, I love Hebrew scholars because they are able to 
uh, give to meaning passages of, of the Old Testament, especially uh, that sometimes escape our understanding. And one explained it this way, and I love it. You know, the Bible says in Genesis that God established the sun to rule by day and the moon to rule by night. In other words, the sun shining in the daytime and the moon, which is obvious at nighttime, are symbolic of the activities that take place, sun in the daytime, moon at night. And what God is saying here is he's saying you're going to be protected by the ruling elements of the day and the ruling elements of the night. No matter what is happening, day or night, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to protect you. And there have been many times in my life, I don't have time to give examples, but I, I thought of a couple and I thought, no, I just really don't have time. But, uh, and a lot of you have heard my stories anyway, but I, I, I have experienced and you have experienced that protective shield that God has over us. And that's a special time when there is danger or where there's consternation or where there's confusion or there's harmful difficulty and you're able to hear him saying to you, I am God and I've got this. And no matter what we're going through right now, we can guarantee one thing, God has this. So here's my final word, the word preparation. And verses seven and eight says, the Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. So preparation, uh, the, 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 the portion of this that, that, that I want us to understand is this, that in the midst of whatever we're going through right now, um, God is preparing us for some glorious new norms that are going to be on the other side of this, this time of preparation. Someone is interested in what's happening in your life. You are not invisible. You may be asking, does anyone care? Does anyone know, you know, what I'm going through right now? Does anybody realize how tough this is on me? And I think of families right now that uh, are going through difficult times simply because you're trying to juggle your schedule with the added responsibility of having the children at home and, and so forth. Well, I, I want you to know this, and I hope this is consolation to you, that, that God is watching, uh, and that's the most important thing. God sees what's going on. He's not idle during this time of shutdown, and he's getting us ready for some things. There's some preparation that is taking place right now. We may be going through a time of inactivity as, as we normally know it, but God is preparing us for our new normal when this is all over with. Psalm 32, 8. I love this passage. He says, I will instruct you. This is the Lord. I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. You know, my daughter-in-law, one of my daughter-in-laws, is, is a teacher. And um, she amazes me with her attentiveness to detail. And I watch her even when the family gets to get, gathers together. That she's, uh, she's always, you can see that she's always taking in every detail of the kids' activities. And I know that she does that at school. She's watching them. And she is, uh, her eye is upon them. And that's what the Lord says. His, his loving eye is on you. He, he's watching because he's preparing you for something in the future. And he's giving you direction and wisdom today so that you can prepare for tomorrow. I know some of you have uh, children that are still at home. And, uh, and I emphasize that at home because they are literally at home right now, and you are not only parenting, but you're also homeschooling, but you're captivated by their activities. And your eye of instruction is upon them, and you're watching them constantly because they have got to get through this today. They have to prepare today 
for what's going to be happening uh, tomorrow. And so, because you don't get from the first grade to the second grade until you finish the first grade. And so his eye of instruction is upon us. I, I want us to all know that during this quote unquote downtime, God is doing some things to get us ready. And this is passage of scripture that I, 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 I wanted to uh, refer to too. First Peter, the third chapter, the fifth verse, and I, I'm wrapping this up, by the way. He says, you are being kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. And you rejoice in this, though for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Well, we are, you know, we're being grieved. We're being tested. He says, but the, the, that there's a purpose for this, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and glory and honor, honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Peter is reminding us that as we go through trials, and, and, and for some of you, you're not just experiencing a trial, you're experiencing trials. I spoke to somebody this week that said, it's not just one thing, but I've got several things that are piling on top of one of my pastor friends. He said, he said, things are just piling in on me. And I know what that's like, that feeling that it's not just one trial, but it's a lot of stuff that's coming together at the same time. But Peter reminds us that there's a testing that is going on and there's a purifying process that is taking place. that's making us strong because the future is always better than the past. And during this time, uh, God is keeping you in a very complete sense, preserving, protecting, and preparing you for tomorrow's reality. The Lord watches over you. He's interested in what you're doing today. And we are we're living today in God's preparation. Tomorrow we are we are, are we're living today in yesterday's preparation. Tomorrow we will live out today's preparation. So the future always requires us to be prepared. One last passage of scripture. This uh, this uh, lets us know that God is on the throne. And he says in, in, in Isaiah 50, 65, verse 24, I will answer them before they even call to me. And while they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer these prayers. I think that uh, there's something that we need to understand is that God does not show up in our time of need. He already showed up before the need arrived. So our testimony is, rather than I had a need and God showed up, our testimony is this. I was in God's presence and a need showed up, not the other way around. Now, I think that's the message that God has been trying to get across to us for centuries. And that is that he is, he's already here. The storehouse is full. And so that's why we pray. We pray because prayer activates the anecdote for the problem. Prayer accesses the remedy that God has already provided. Prayer is not for God's sake. Prayer is for our sake. Prayer is to open up the storehouse, and God's storehouse is full today. Prayer unlocks the door to God's storehouse. That's why we do. We pray with thanksgiving. is because we pray in faith. We understand that when we unlock the door, the answer is there. God showed up before the problem arrived. So when this virus showed up, God was already there. When, we, uh, when we're facing, and a lot of us are facing uh, unusual and difficult times right now, I'm talking to friends who are without employment and, and people who have lost their 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 jobs and so forth. But just because the company is through with you does not mean that God is through with you. He is preparing for you something that is even better. I want us to pray together. Father, I just lift up all of those within 
earshot right now. And I just ask you, uh, let this be a moment, a holy moment, where we reach out and embrace the promises of God like never before. Thank you that today, Lord, thank you for your provision. I just thank you for preserving us. We know that there's a reason for what we're going through. I thank you for protecting us, for keeping our hearts protected. I thank you for protecting us from harm. I thank you for protecting us from doubt and discouragement and fear. And Lord, I thank you that you're preparing each and every one of us. You're preparing us for that which is to come. And Lord, I just uh, lift up those who may be listening and watching who have, who have never embraced you as Lord and Savior. And I pray that this would be the time when you would speak gently to their hearts, draw them close to yourself. And Father, give them, give them that sense of, of, uh, of awareness that you are there bringing them through this time and that you have something better for them. And Lord, may they, they come to an understanding that they don't have to do what you have already done. Thank you for going to the cross on our behalf and making life available to us. We give you the praise and the glory for it. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you and thank you so much for being with us today.
As we close our service this morning, I just want to lead us in a prayer and ask the Lord to be with us. And I'm going to read a prayer from Psalm 61. And it starts off like this. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can trust in you. We thank you that we can go to you, and God, you do bring us victory in our lives. You do bring us strength. You do provide for us. God, you are our almighty God, and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.